Hello and welcome to our review of The Downfall of Pompeii, a classic Euro game. How does it stand up 18 years after its initial release? The Downfall of Pompeii was designed by Klaus Jürgen Word, who is best known as the designer of the very well-known tile lane game Carcassonne. Features artwork from Oliver Fredenreich and Guido Hoffman. It was originally produced by Amigo, in Germany in 2004, and then two years later released in North America in English from Mayfair Games. Now, while Mayfair Games is no more, and this game is technically out of print, you can still find it at various online and physical stores. For example, we got our copy dirt cheap at Princess Auto here in Windsor. There was also a second English edition printed in 2013, which is what we have. The most obvious physical difference in the editions being the first edition box is landscape, uh, while the second editions are portrait orientation. Now, the 2013 edition also includes three dual vent promo tiles, which were originally a con exclusive. Anyway, Downfall of Pompeii is listed as a two to four player game on the box on Board Game Geek and everywhere else, but I would say it's a three or four player game. Games are quick, with most being done in under an hour, and they get quicker the more experienced the players are. Board Game Geek overwhelmingly recommends four player, in fact, as the best play at number. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Now, in The Downfall of Pompeii, you play out the tragic history of the ancient Roman city of Pompeii, which rested at the foot of Mount Vesuvius. You start by moving people into the city, and then those people start inviting more family members to join as their relatives. Then disaster strikes and the game totally swaps to being about how many people you can lead to freedom before Vesuvius destroys the city for good. Despite the somewhat dark theme, this is a family weight game mm -hmm. we've enjoyed, but with both adults and kids alike. Now, as a historical note, Pompeii had it really mm -hmm. rough. <laughs> 17 years before Vesuvius erupted, burying the town, an earthquake destroyed much of the city. And during the excavation, the city was found to still be undergoing reconstruction from the <laughs> earthquake what, when it was buried by the uh, volcano. Now, for a look at the surprisingly nice components for the time this game was published at, check out our The Downfall, Downfall of Pompeii unboxing video on YouTube. Overall, the component quality in this game is pretty impressive, uh, especially the plastic volcano that's honestly easily assembled and taken apart between plays. It's not just flat, like there's little molded divots and stuff in it. Now, of course, the best way to play this game and make it even cooler is to toss an LED tea light into that volcano. And honestly, don't you dare share a picture of you playing the game without a tea light online unless you want commenters coming out of the woodwork to tell you to use one. And please do use LED tea lights. Yeah. Lambable tea lights are not your friend here. Plastic volcano. That's an important note. I guess it's better than paper volcano, but still. Definitely not fireproof volcano. Maybe you can get a Teflon coating and coat your volcano to add that realism. But then you're going to be tossing wood bits in there, and that's bad. Now, besides the cool volcano, you also get lava tiles, a bag to put them in, single-sided mounted board, deck of cards, a clear set of instructions, and cylindrical playing pieces in four colors. Now, these playing pieces are the cause of my biggest complaint about this game. While you get nice wooden pieces in four colors and they're hexagonal so they don't roll away, which is great, you don't get the same number of pieces in each color. Well, now that we know what you get, how about you walk us through how to play The Downfall of Pompeii? This one's easy enough. I'm pretty much going to give you an almost full teach, except for one thing at the beginning that's just a little bit too much. So you start by building the volcano and you put the board out and you grab a set of player pieces in your chosen color if it's available. Uh, you set up the deck with starting cards according to the instructions. There's the cop out because setting up the deck in this game is the most fiddly part of the game. And I never remember it. And every time I sit down to play, I got to grab the rules to figure out how to do the seven decks of four cards and everything else. So I'm not going to get into it here. But if you do want those full details, again, check the instructions of the game or check out the written version of this review at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. We are not an AP or rules video. We're here to give you an idea of if you want to buy this game or play it or not. Yes, just know the most fiddly part is setting up the initial deck. It's still not hard. It just, again, I got to reference the rules every time. Now, the game is played over three main phases. Now, the rules only separate the game into two, but I find there are three distinct 
phases of play when you play this game. And that's how I like to teach the game. And that's how I'm going to talk about it tonight. Now, the first phase is called bring new citizens or sorry, new citizens move to Pompeii. You play a card from your hand and put a person on the building that matches the card. Nice and simple. Draw a replacement card. Keep doing that, going around the table until someone draws the first 79 AD card with a nice picture of Vesuvius on it. Now, why anyone would move to a city that was still rebuilding after a major earthquake is beyond me, but so be it. Well, the land was almost magically fertile. Stuff grew huge there for some reason that I'm sure the Romans didn't quite understand at the time. That we now know that volcanic ash is actually really rich in nutrients. Next is my second phase. This is one that's not in the book that I call invite your relatives to join you. You've moved your people into Pompeii and now they start bringing their relatives to the town. So after the first 79 AD card is drawn, you now place additional pieces on your turn if you place your first play piece in a building that already contains one or more of your people. For every person that's already there, you're going to get a bonus relative that you can now move in into the same colored building or a neutral gray building. Come on over, folks. Sure, the last few years were rough, but how could it get any worse? Am I right? Now, in addition to placing relatives, once you get to this phase of the game, you may be drawing omen cards. When this happens, they choose one playing piece of any color on the board and toss it into the volcano, then draw a replacement card. This continues until the second 79 AD card comes up. Note that I am not aware of any sacrificing to the volcano that was going on that this might represent. Now, I'm pretty sure thematically this is supposed to just be people going missing, which is why they call them omen cards. The actual cutthroat nature of this mechanic, though, is not a thematic element, just a mechanic. Now, the final phase of the downfall of Pompeii, my, my version of the rules, is run for your lives. At this point, everyone discards their hands and all cards can be placed back in the box. You then begin filling the board with lava, each player drawing a lava tile from the bag and placing it until there are six on the board. Now, any pieces covered by lava or completely cut off from any exits are tossed in the volcano. Tossing people in the volcano is, in fact, one of the highlights yeah. of this fun game. Now, after the initial six lava tiles are placed, each player on their turn will draw in place one more lava tile and then move their people. Now, they're going to get to move twice, either one piece two times or two different pieces once. Now, when moving people, you're going to get to move them a number of squares equal to the total number of playing pieces on that square before being moved. So a single piece on its own can only move one space, but one that's in a pile of five pieces would be able to move five squares. Now, the goal here is to get as many of your pieces out the city gates where they're considered safe. You collect any of the ones you save and put them in front of you. Historical note, they weren't actually safe there. <laughs> now, play continues until there's no pieces left in the city or the bag runs out of lava tiles, whichever comes first. If you do run out of every tile, uh, uh, sorry, if you do run out of tiles, everyone in the city is tossed in the volcano. Player with the most escape people in front of them wins the game. In the case of the tie, the win goes to the player with the least people in the volcano. Sadly, this quite enjoyable game does not represent the facts of what actually happened to the poor people of Pompeii, but instead posits a rather fanciful tale of escape and safety for many. Like Sounds the simple. Disney version of Pompeii. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds simple enough. Now that we know how to play, what did you think of the downfall of Pompeii? So this is a game with simple, easy to differentiate components that's very easy to learn and quick to play. This is a game that kids can enjoy, but has more than enough depth to challenge experienced players. The theme, though dark, is interesting, historically based, and surprisingly well tied to the mechanics, which I admit wasn't very common for games that old. It really is impressive to see this level of theme integration for an early aughts game. Now, while I could totally see a kickstarted deluxe version of the downfall of Pompeii with unique miniatures for every player and a deluxe plastic volcano that lights up and does a Wilhelm scream every time you toss a mini in it, there's just something about the existing design that just, well dated, feels kind of elegant. I'm also not sure the Wilhelm scream would pass a cultural consultant's approval. Uh, fair enough. Maybe they'll scream in Roman. Of course, when talking components, I can't help but mention, again, the fact the game didn't give you an equal number of all the colored playing pieces, which means that at different player counts, you are forced to use different colors. I'm kind of baffled by this. 
Though I do know of at least one other game that did this, which also happens to be from Mayfair. So I guess it was just something they did. This was their way to keep the costs a bit lower, I guess. All I can say is I'm really glad this isn't a trend that continued into modern board games. The fact that in order to pl have a proper two-player game, you have to play with specific colors is infuri infuriating, to be sure. Now, I do have one other complaint with the game that I kind of alluded to earlier, and that it's specifically when playing with two players. Besides not getting to play my favorite color, yellow, we also found that the game just wasn't that good with only two people. With only two, it becomes far too easy to end up with a tie at the end of the game, especially if blows both players manage to get all their pieces out during the first two phases, which isn't hard to do because there's less competition. While I would say the game is playable at two and it works, there are plenty of other games in my collection that play great at two, and I can't personally see ever breaking out Pompeii for a two-player game again. And once again, it's four that's actually the recommended best count, even though three is playable. Now, the gameplay and downfall of Pompeii is tense and engaging start to finish. One of the best aspects of this game is trying to plan ahead because you know what's coming. When placing your pieces during the first two phases, you're well aware of what's next and what you're going to have to do. And figuring out the best way to use your cards to both get the most people out uh, during the first two phases, as well as trying to position them so they're near gates, is what keeps us coming back to this game time and time again. Of course, there is the random lava factor, so planning only gets you so far. Yeah, and this variability in the cards, as well as the lava tiles, does mean that while the gameplay never changes, every game of Pompeii plays the same, every time you sit down to play, you're going to get a different experience. The random factor in this game makes the game much more replayable. It's never quite the same game twice. Though in no way does the city survive. R.I.P. No. Pompeii. Overall, Downfall of Pompeii is a classic Euro game that totally stands the test of time. Despite being 18 years old, this is a very solid gateway game that's easy to learn and fun to play with gamers of all experience levels. If you dig classic Euro games, you probably already own the Downfall of Pompeii, but if you don't, it's worth picking up as soon as you can. Now, especially because it's currently available at bargain rates, both online and in physical stores. Remember, this game is out of print, with Mayfair going under, so these cheap copies are gone. You may never see the game again, just like the city. There are still deals to be had on the secondary market as well for this currently, mm -hmm. but again, once stock in stores dries up, so will the deals in the secondary market. I honestly think most game groups are going to dig this game. There really is a lot to like. I've yet to introduce this game to someone out there and not have them enjoy it. And many of the people I have shown the game to have requested that I break it out again and again, my kids included. It's always nice to see classic games like this really stand the test of time and prove that one and done doesn't have to be the way of games. Now, if you're a gamer who's all about table presence, lots of plastic bits and detailed miniatures and building scenery, this may not be the game for you. Though I personally think the gameplay is solid enough, if this is something you're into, you could always pick it up and then pimp it out. Build a deluxe volcano and find some ancient Roman citizen miniatures to use for your villagers. Well, that's it for our review of The Downfall of Pompeii, a classic Euro game that actually stood the test of time, unlike the city it's based on. <laughs> What's a classic game you still think is great? Tell us about it in the comments down below. Now, before we go, I do want to invite you to check out the written review of The Downfall of Pompeii over at TabletopBellhop.com. There, I go into more detail about how to play and share some more of my thoughts on the game, as well as pictures from our plays.